Hey everyone, welcome back. As you can see, we've got the tarantula wall behind me still. That means new enclosure up in front. That means it's a rehousing day today. It's not necessarily a rehousing, it's a first housing, I guess, so to speak, because it's a newly acquired species brought into the room. The species I got at the last reptile expo in Toronto, and it's been sitting in this little tiny Tupperware since then. It's a really, really cool species. It's a proven female. It's a species that we're going to talk a little bit more in detail about. I'm going to talk a little bit more about this cool little enclosure. But first, let's roll the intro. <laughs> Alright guys, so the species in question that we're going to be talking about is this Viridaceus. This is a cute, cool little spider. I don't know if you're going to see much at all with it from, uh, from the camera. It's obviously, it's a fairly heavy webber, but it's very, very striking. It's a true spider species. It's not a tarantula. It's Viridaceus fasciatus, and it comes from the island of Madagascar. Now, theoretically, if you look up almost anything about this, this genus online, they're going to say that it's monotypic. But the problem is, there, there's all ever, after that, all the information is all over the place in regards to size and everything. But bottom line is, we believe it to be Veridaceus fasciatus. That is the name for the one species that is formally described. It was described by Eugene Simon back in 1889. So this is a species that's been known to science for a fair bit of time. Now, the species, although not all that toxic, there's not a lot of research or study has been done on this species, but it's not believed to be highly virulent or very, very potent venom. I'm still going to treat it with the same level of respect as some of my most dangerous animals. Uh, we've got our catch cup, so we've got all that stuff, everything ready to go. But before we do that, we have to set up a nice, beautiful, nature-inspired enclosure for this beautiful girl. And today we're going to be using this acrylic enclosure from the, the people over, the good people over at Primal Fear Tarantulas. You can go and check them out. They make some exceptional products. One of the products that you guys already see is probably up behind me there is that little uh, coffin inspired one that we did the Black Widow in her little enclosure and it's holding up, it's doing real well and it's just absolutely amazing for presentation. This particular unit, I bought two of these units. I wasn't overly pleased with them for my applications at the time, but I think for this particular species, I think this unit will work absolutely amazing. So I've got a bunch of components here ready and set up, ready to go. Now let's talk a little bit more about this particular spider. This species, it does come from Madagascar. And as I mentioned, a lot of the information is kind of all over the place. It's called the zebra wandering spider. You, you, you can find information about its habitats. It lives on the forest floor. It lives in very, very arid, cold forest. So it's very, very variable in regards to its habitat. So that's actually good for us because it means it can, it, it can do well in a lot of different scenarios. So let's get this go ahead and get this one ready to go. Uh, because we're going to set it up kind of middle of the road, I'm going to be using my ordinary substrate mix that I use for all my Bavarian builds. And then I'm also going to be going ahead and using, adding a little bit of component of some mixed coarse sand. Uh, we're going to add some that. we got some different type of leaf layer conos. we got some cork bark. We have some really weather-worn pieces of wood. So let's go ahead and put it on a time lapse and let's set up a beautiful enclosure for this old girl. I think it came together fairly well. We've added some natural moss. We've added that sand a bit to the substrate, that natural organic substrate that I use for all my vivariums. So it's going to drain really, really well. We've added that nice piece of weather-worn wood. We've got a water dish. And we've got this cork hide that kind of covers the entire back of the enclosure, but it's all fully recessed on the back. So when it's back there, that'll give it a good structure. And it's got lots of access points that can access it up here over the top. And it can access it on the, on this side as well, over the top as well. So now that's the easy part. The hard part now is taking an animal that is, is, is known for extreme speed and teleportation and taking it from here 
and putting it in here safely. So you've seen that we've already put the lid on the enclosure and we've left the front door open. So I'm gonna be able to put the front door kind of in place because more than likely this animal is gonna to wanna to go up right away as soon as we get it out of here. So we're gonna see how it goes, but uh, hopefully it does go up and it follows suit. But we do have all our tools here and uh, I guess we're gonna do it. Now, because there's a lot of conflicting information about this species online, I've provided a fair bit of ground space. I've provided a lot of vertical height. We've given it different styles of hides. We've got good drainage, but also moisture retentative. So I think we've covered all the bases. So now it's time to let's get her in there. Well, truth be told, that rehouse couldn't have gone any easier. Short of the reflections, check out how incredible she is. Sold in the trade sometimes is the Madagascar Zebra Spider. That's easy to see where she gets that name. Now, a lot of the confusion that comes up, one of them is not just in habitat. One of the biggest issues is the fact that if you look online under this, under this genus, which this clearly is the species from, uh, it, there's so much misinformation. It says that the mature size is only about two and a half centimeters for a female. I don't know if that measurement's only caught including the body, not including the legs. I don't really know. But clearly this girl is probably three, three and a half inches in size from leg to leg. And I'm told that she can get easily four, four and a half inches in size, which is the reason for such a large enclosure. But regardless, I'm sure she will do just fine. Let her settle in. 